Hello again. Uh, now, as I stated in the uh, previous video, the one that uh, uh, posted under announcements, um, I want to take this opportunity this first week to uh, introduce myself to you guys uh, out there uh, in the, the online community. Uh, teaching these online courses is sometimes hard to get a feel of uh, who people are uh, and the kind of things they do. Uh, and uh, so, you know, I encourage you uh, to, uh, to post anything you want to in this week's forum, okay? Uh, who you are, what you like to do, your interests, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, I never have my students do anything that I, uh, I wouldn't do. So, you know, here's me. Um, actually, I may have mentioned this in one of the, the previous videos, I don't recall. I am actually in my home studio right now as we, uh, as we get ready to uh, start this semester. Uh, yeah, this, is, uh, this is where I work, uh, just downstairs from uh, a dining room and upstairs from a, uh, a weight room. Uh, and yeah, um, really, for me, it's a really a comfortable, uh, a comfortable space uh, where I can uh, you know, really get creative. I got a lot of books over here, a laptop, and you know, all that stuff. Got my massive drawing board back here uh, that I actually inherited from my father, though he's not dead. He was just going to junk the thing. He was gonna put it out behind the, the barn on his property. Uh, the thing, has a uh, has a built-in uh, straight edge, which the parts alone would cost a couple hundred dollars. And he was just going to junk it, so I uh, was like, "Oh, I'll take it." The thing's probably as as old as I am, and I'm 52, but it's got a built-in light board and all that kind of stuff. It's really quite nice. Anyway, um, so uh, let's see about me. Uh, hate talking about myself. Okay, uh, let's see. I, uh, well, again, my name is Brad Olers. I'm a professor of art and design at Mid-Michigan, uh, excuse me, um, yeah, Mid-Michigan College. I almost want to say Mid-Michigan Community College. They've changed their name. Uh, and I've been doing that for 15 years. Started as an adjunct, did that for a good 12 years or so, maybe a little over that, before I uh, being, uh, being made full-time faculty and a uh, full professor. Okay. Uh, now, here's the thing about that, though. Uh, I am not a lifelong academic. Not at all. As a matter of fact, I didn't think I would ever... I didn't even... I didn't ever plan on getting, getting into teaching. It just wasn't a thing. It's not something I thought about. Uh, for years, I was a uh, graphic designer, uh, freelance illustrator, uh, freelance cartoonist, um, you know, whatever, whatever I could do to make a little bit of money. Um, I guess I, I should explain that a little bit. I was one of those uh, guys that, um, you know, uh, high school was great, you know, I uh, was on the uh, staff for the school paper, uh, the yearbook, uh, won awards on a statewide level and stuff uh, for illustrations and comics, uh, in, you know, in the yearbook and in the paper and stuff. Uh, and then I went to college, and after my third year, uh, the the money kind of ran out, <laughs> which happens. Uh, and you know, when I was in college in those days, uh, I, I was studying what we what we would call now graphic design, but in those days it was called commercial art. We're talking the mid '80s here, okay, uh, early to mid '80s. And uh, so, in those days too, we didn't use computers. Uh, computers weren't in the classroom uh, hardly at all, unless you were taking a computer course. Uh, so, uh, so the world's changed a lot since then. I have to say, we uh, we basically we all set up drawing boards. If we had to do any lettering, we would uh, make xeroxes of specialty letters from typeset books, stuff like that. Is very different than what you guys are doing now. Um, Anyway, I uh, like I said, uh, after three years, the money kind of ran out, and I, uh, but I kind of landed on my, uh, I don't want to say I landed on my feet, but I did all right in that I uh, got a job in printing, okay, and uh, that helped kind of set the course for um, the next phase of my career, if you want to call it that, uh, because when I got into printing, I actually learned a lot about not only black and white quick printing, but uh, 
four color process and uh, you know binding and uh, pagination and a lot of the technical stuff that you only really uh, only really uh, can learn about if you work in the print industry. Okay, uh, so you know worked at uh, some print shops for a few years and then wound up moving on to uh, an advertising firm. It was an advertising firm that was within the offices of a newspaper. So we not only worked with clients, you know, developing uh, ad campaigns and, you know, whatever for, for them, uh, but we also did advertisements for uh, the newspapers that the publishing company owned and uh, about, I'd say over a dozen, about 16 uh, weekly uh, buyer's guides and reminders, you know, those things that you get in your mailbox, you know, and you didn't ask for it. Yeah, we did those. And uh, in that job, boy, I tell you, you learn to crank out the work. <laughs> uh, because in that job, uh, on, a, on, on a weekly basis, we would generally crank out uh, between probably 20 and 30 ads a week. And I'm talking everybody cranked out 20 or 30 a week. And there were eight of us in that department. Eight of us in that department, I mean, eight of us in layout. There were another six people that worked in um, uh, typesetting. And then there was uh, another two people that worked in uh, paste up. And it was this whole process where we would we would take an ad off the wall, not a, not an ad, it was just a bunch of papers with descriptions and you know things that were gonna be on sale this week and stuff like that. And we would have to, uh, uh, find uh, pictures of, you know, say like the grocery store, whatever grocery store, uh, you know, has got turkeys for sale. So we have to find a cut of a turkey, a cut meaning a picture. Find a cut of a turkey, plop it on there. Okay, green beans, green bean casserole. Okay, so find a cut of a green bean casserole, put it, you know, put it on there. Uh, and this is all non-digital too. We didn't use computers. We would find these pictures in these big sort of general books that had uh, cuts of everything. Again, sorry, uh, cuts meaning pictures. It's an old uh, printing term. So, and then you go to make a Xerox of that, cut it out with an X-Acto, uh, run it through a waxer, a hot waxer, slap it on the page. So you arrange the page. Uh, so it had a nice flow to it. You'd put in your, um, you know, a, a burst or something like that if you needed to, or, you know, shapes and stuff like that. Then I'd go into typesetting. Okay, and in typesetting, what they would do is they would take um, the text that was on a separate sheet uh, and just, just type that out, just raw text on big, it'd be in big sheets that came off of rolls. It was like photograph paper. And then I'm going to uh, typesetting, uh, not excuse me, not typesetting. Uh, it would go into paste up after typesetting, and then someone would have to cut those individual words and letters out and arrange them in a pleasing way. It was a very painstaking process until a lot of people to do what one person can do in no time at all these days. So if anybody tells you anything about the good old days, things are way easier now, at least in regards to graphic design, printing, all that stuff. And the work looks so much better too. Yeah, the good old days, forget it, okay? The rock and roll might've been better, but as far as being an artist, technology was not. Okay, so uh, after I uh, did the thing of the paper for a while, I, uh, excuse me, went back into printing for a bit uh, and then wound up uh, working at a sign shop. Okay, now a sign shop, that was really interesting because we would, uh, boy, we did everything uh, from uh, graphics for billboards to uh, just you know, engraved nameplates and badges and stuff like that. It was it was really cool. Uh, we got to do some really fun stuff. Uh, my one of my favorite things to do in those days was uh, I would do bumper stickers for friends of mine. I had friends that were in bands and stuff, and I was I was uh, I, I I had to buy my own uh, my own vinyl uh, so that the uh, the company wasn't taking a hit. Uh, cause I didn't care if I had some free time, if I did this stuff. And so I would, I would crank these things out for, 
uh, you know, bands and clubs and, you know, just, just in a small scale for fun. And, um, you can still see, uh, some of the, uh, bumper stickers that I did around Mount Pleasant, uh, you know, now almost 20 years later. Um, but anyway, um, uh, around that time too, I also went back to school and that's when I got my, uh, my bachelor's degree, which, uh, by that time they had changed, uh, commercial art into, uh, graphic design and everything was on a computer now. And so I had to learn how to use Illustrator and then, uh, I used Photoshop a little bit, but really got a handle on how to use Photoshop and how to do some you know, small animations. Uh, back then we were using Director, which later became Flash, I think. Uh, yeah, something like that. And then now it's Adobe Animate. Uh, so, uh, and that, that was that was quite a while ago. It was, you know, like I said, 20 years ago. Uh, and then, uh, and then uh, oddly enough, I, I wound up... Uh, I was I was working at the uh, at the sign shop when uh, when I got approached to uh, teach a class, uh, and that was for the Claire Gladwin RESD. They were looking for someone who could teach graphic design to um, you know a class full of high school students. Uh, when I went in for that job, the interview, I had no idea, none, that they were looking for a teacher. I was given the number um, of the guy that interviewed me by a friend of mine. She's like, hey, you know, I ran into her one time. She's like, hey, Brad, you do graphic design or something like that, right? And I was like, well, I got a degree in it. I hope so. She goes, oh, here's this guy's number. I don't want to say who it is. Here, here's this guy's number. Why don't you give him a call? And so I, I gave this guy a call thinking it was just going to be some freelance gig or something like that. Got called in for an interview and I'm thinking, okay, apparently not a freelance thing. More like a staff position, maybe. Uh, and... Uh, you know, I mean, staff position as a on staff designer, and uh, in the interview, he asked me, "Well, how do you feel about teaching a class full of, you know, fifteen to twenty high school students?" My response was, "Hey, um, I, I don't want to blow the interview, but uh, I don't have a teaching certificate." And his response was, "That's okay. We'll work around it." And they did. So there you go. Uh, since then, I've actually uh, I've actually gotten a master's degree. Um, so I was working at the, uh, RESD, uh, and that's, uh, the RESD is within the mid campuses up in Harrison. And, uh, so I was getting to be a, a known face around there. And that's when I was approached by my predecessor to, uh, start teaching drawing one. And I did that for, like I said, a number of years, uh, before, uh, taking over her position when she retired. So that's how I wound up, uh, wound up uh, being a teacher and uh or a professor no and uh, like i said i uh i got a uh, got a master's degree in the meantime uh and that was through the academy of art university uh in san francisco so a lot of online courses uh but my uh, master's degree is in illustration okay and uh my illustration with an emphasis on comic book and graphic novel illustration uh, so I also, I, I teach a uh, comic book graphic novel illustration class here at MED. Uh, love it. Um, love comics. That's what I, that's what I do. And you can see on the wall over here, uh, above my drawing board, I've got, uh, the original art from comic strips. Uh, the one back here is a Barney Baxter strip from 1942. The original artwork by uh, a guy named Frank Miller. Not the famous Frank Miller, the Frank Miller that died in 1949. Different guy. Amazing artwork. And this one here is a Wash Tubs and Captain Easy strip uh, by Les Turner, who uh, took it over from Roy Crane. Uh, and that's from about 1949. Um, I also got some some other ones over here. Uh, got a couple of Buck Rogers strips, some Starhawks by Gil Kane over here. I love comics. Love comic strips, especially. Uh, comic strips don't really sell these days. So when I do my work, I do, uh, I do comic book work. Um, so here's, uh, this is a, this is an anthology that came out a little while ago that I, uh, I've got a, a two-parter in. This a space opera, uh, story, uh, at Galaxy's Core. That's, uh, it was a two-parter in issues, uh, one and two of Indie Comics. But if you want to read the entire thing, you can just go to atgalaxyscore.com. 
all one word, say it all one word, and put a dot .com in the end. You can go in and you read the whole 16-page story there. It's just kind of a uh, fun little uh, story. Um, let's see. You can also go to, I don't have an example of it right now, but you can also go to CommodoreDinosaur.com, uh, which is where I have an, another uh, complete uh, comic book avail you know, available online for free. Um, that was actually Commodore Dinosaur, the first issue, the origin story, the, qu the quest of Quetzalcoatl. I love alliteration. Um, anyway, uh, that was actually my thesis for my master's degree. Okay. Uh, yeah, like my brother who got a master's degree and actually got a doctorate, his thesis was like a book. Mine was a comic book. Yeah, he hates that. Anyway, so if you want to go and check that out, you can. And also, um, if you want to check out some of my other work, uh, you can go to bradulrich.com, which is my professional website, where you can see examples of not only my comic work, but also some of my illustrations and some of my portraits and some of my paintings that I've done. I do all that stuff. Uh, my current uh, work, when I have free time, which when I'm teaching 8 to 10 classes per semester, I don't have a lot of, but in the summertime and on breaks, um, currently what I'm working on is, uh, this is the, this is a cover proof, okay, uh, of a graphic novel that I'm, uh, that I'm working on called Castor and the Vandal. And, uh, when I say Vandal, I don't mean like somebody that's, uh, you know, throws rocks and breaks the windows out of, uh, out of, uh, you know, abandoned buildings, but, uh, a Vandal barbarian that was, they were actually a tribe that, uh, sacked Rome at one point. So this is a, this is a graphic novel that's set in uh, 167 AD. Okay. A uh, little bit of sword and sorcery action. I, I don't know. The, the, I think the uh, characters might change up. I'm, I'm redesigning the look of the characters a little bit right now. So this is probably, this isn't the final version, uh, but that's, uh, that's something that I'm working on right now. Okay. So um, let's see. Other than that, uh, let's see. Been married for, 12 years, got a nice mid-century modern house, looks like the Brady Bunch house, uh, full of fabulous 50s style furniture, uh, love Star Wars, love science fiction. Uh, I'm looking around my room here and uh, yeah, I've got, I got posters from 1977 and uh, signed comic books uh, of, uh, you know, that were like Marvel's uh, Star Wars and uh, Micronauts and stuff like that, uh, that I've picked up over the years. Uh, so yeah, if you're, if you're into geek stuff, you know, Hey, you know, talk geek to me. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll understand. Okay. Um, let's see. Other than that. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Got teenagers in the house now. Not wild about that. So, um, uh, but, uh, they'll, they'll grow out of it. Actually, now they're teenagers. It, life's so much easier because they spend all their time looking at their phones, you know, whatever. All right, so uh, that's that's it about me. Um, hey, um, like I said, be sure to post something in this introduce your you know this uh, whole introduce yourself thing. Um, you don't like I said you don't have to post a video or anything like that uh, if you're not comfortable with that. I know I'm not, um, but uh, you know artwork or you know just stuff about yourself or a link to your you know if you've got uh, like a YouTube channel or you've got. Uh, you know, Instagram account you want people to see, I, I don't know, whatever. I, I don't do the social media thing like a lot of people do. Uh, but if you want to post stuff from, you know, things like that or whatever, that's cool. Uh, just, to, you know, somehow let us get to know each other. Like I said, with online courses, it's really, really tough to get to know people. But, you know, the fact is, I, I've got friends now, um, one, for example, that lives uh, in Massachusetts, fantastic children's books illustrator uh chat with her a couple of times a week okay but i never met her face to face <laughs> you know we met through an online course at aau okay and uh yeah so uh so i absolutely encourage you guys to get to know each other okay um so i will talk to you guys later all right